Hey everyone, Dana here. I am so close to hitting 10,000 subscribers on Instagram. And yes, I know they're not actually called subscribers on Instagram. Question. On YouTube, they're called subscribers, and in German, they're called Abonnenten, right? So what are followers on Instagram called in German? Also Abonnenten? Followers. Auf Deutsch. Mitläufer? I don't know, but anyway, if you're not following me on Instagram yet, you can check me out there for more content. My stories on Instagram are usually in German, auf Deutsch, with uh, usually little English subtitles when I can. I actually asked you something on Instagram about German for this video. Okay, so I recently put out a video, five English words I was pretty shocked to hear Germans using right smack dab in the middle of otherwise German sentences. And while making that video, a bunch of other English words came to mind that I was also pretty shocked just do not exist in German. And one word that I am not at all shocked doesn't exist in German. Like it makes total sense to me that this English word doesn't exist in German. Quiz. What? 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 There's no German word for quiz? When I put quiz into an English German dictionary, it gives me quiz. The only way that I know it is a German word and not the English word quiz is because the German word quiz has a capital Q always, no matter where it is in the sentence, even if it's in the middle of the sentence, the German quiz has a capital Q. German has even incorporated it into other German words. A pub quiz is a Kneipen quiz, quiz spiel, quiz sendung, quiz show. One word, quiz show, rather than two in English. My question here is though, when it comes to school, does quiz have the same meaning in Germany as in the US? In the US, the word test refers to a, a bigger kind of assessment, and a quiz is usually a smaller assessment. So you might have a couple quizzes each week, and then, you know, a bigger test after several weeks. A quiz was also often shorter too, like we might have a 10 question quiz within the first 15 minutes of class or something and then continue doing something else, while a test was usually longer and we usually had the whole length of the class to complete the test. Is it the same in Germany? What is the difference between a quiz in Germany and a test? Let me know in the comments. Piercing. The concept of body piercings is so old. You know, like we as humans have been piercing different parts of our bodies basically for forever. There have been these mummies and these, these old skeletons discovered with piercings and jewelry for those piercings. Like this is not some kind of like newfangled phenomena. You know, we've been doing it for a while now. And yet in Germany, the word piercing is used instead of some German word. Now, I do realize that the etymology of the word piercing comes from French and before that from Latin, but it entered English as pierce in Middle English and it has been around ever since. So it's been in English for a while. And with that ing there at the end, piercing, sounds very English, you know? So I feel comfortable saying that piercing in this form is an English word, and that German got the term piercing with the ing from English. But am I wrong with this piercing thing? Like, is there one single German word for piercing that people actually use and say, or do they usually use piercing? I've always heard piercing, like Augenbrauen piercing, Körper piercing, um, Orten piercing. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Sport. Sport. British English, sports, as we say in the US, is in German, sport. Sport is sport, which I just find so interesting, you know, because like sport is, or sports are, as I would say, such a huge part of society in Germany, in all countries, I guess, right? You know, like sports are often a huge pastime, whether you do it or you watch it, it's huge. Now, when I looked online for this video, I did find that apparently in German, the word Zerstreuung used to be used for sports. 
maybe? although I wasn't really sure if I got that correctly. Have you ever heard of this word in German, especially in combination with sports? Let me know in the comments. But from what I could find, it seems as though the word sport first entered the German language in the 1800s. I believe it was the 1830s, thanks to a person named Fürst Pückler. He apparently wrote a letter talking about sport, and he also used the word sportsman as well. So apparently that's how it, the word sport came into German, but I just find it really fascinating that, like, yeah, what did they call sports before this? Cringy. In that other video, in the comments, so many people mentioned the word cringe or cringy, and yes, 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 I can only agree, yes. I am shocked there is no German word for cringy. Yes, the English German dictionary does often give the word peinlich for cringe or cringy, but I'm sorry, no, peinlich is embarrassing and embarrassing is not cringy. Just because something is embarrassing does not automatically make it cringy. And something can absolutely be cringy without it being embarrassing. When I was eight, I tripped and I fell down this huge flight of stairs right in the middle of this big store and everyone turned their heads and stared at me and I can remember feeling so, so embarrassed. But it was not cringy. I had tripped, I had fallen, you know, it, like not cringy. However, when, for example, I look back at some of my older wanted adventure videos, I do sometimes experience a little bit of cringe, but it's not embarrassment. 100% not embarrassment. I wanna make that super clear. I am actually really proud of my six years of wanted adventure videos, each and every one of them. I'm not embarrassed. I am proud of the creative process that I have taken and then the way that I've evolved. But still, watching certain parts of some of my old videos. Down, sit, hut, hut, hut. Wait, what? It's not that kind of football? Oh, then what? It does sometimes make me feel a little like ee cringe, you know? Actually, it doesn't even have to be super old videos. Sometimes it's just uh, some videos where I was doing something kind of like a little, a little weird or something. But that's not to say that I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> like, okay, oh, so like there's the video with Stefan where I tell him a bunch of jokes that I made up and I try to get him to laugh and he doesn't laugh and yeah, it's a little cringe. According to some people in the comments, it's a lot cringe. And I know that, I agree. It's a little cringe, but I still love it. It cracks me up, and I've actually been planning jokes for round two. So yeah, cringe is not always a deal breaker. It's not always that bad. I don't know, it's hard to explain. How would you describe it? How do you use it? What are some examples of some cringy things you've done? Have you ever looked back at old photos, old videos, clothes that you used to wear and felt kind of cringe about it? Let me know in the comments. But anyway, I definitely feel like a language that has the word fremdschämen, which we don't have in English, fremdschämen. Um, that is when you feel ashamed for someone else. Like if you see someone doing something cringy, you might experience fremdschämen. So yeah, I just think it's really interesting that a language that has fremdschämen doesn't really have a word for cringe. BB cream. BB cream either stands for blemish balm cream, blemish base cream, or beauty balm cream. We as a society have not really <laughs> agreed upon what yet. We're not sure what it's called, but whatever it's called, the product was invented by a German dermatologist, Dr. Christine Schrammeck, in the 1960s. So created by a German. But as far as I can find, the only name is an English one, which I think is super interesting. Created by a German, invented by a German English name. Tr to try to get to the bottom of this, as I said, Instagram, I asked you on Instagram, why am I pointing down there? I asked you on Instagram, somewhere else. <laughs> what? 
Trying to get to the bottom of this, I asked you about it on Instagram, what you call BB cream in Germany, and the majority of you, so 90% of you, 471 people to be exact, said that you call it BB cream. But I did see that some people were saying there is another German word for it, getönte Tageskrem, literally tinted day cream. So I looked it up online and from what I could find, it would seem that getönte Tageskrem is kind of like an umbrella term under which is BB cream, CC cream, DD cream and EE cream. So yeah, apparently BB cream is a kind of getönte Tageskrem but not all Getunta Tagus creams are BB creams. And now, as promised, an English word used in German that absolutely does not shock me whatsoever, fast food. Fast food, one word in German, two words in English, Fast food restaurants, as we know them today, originated in the US and the most popular fast food restaurants in Germany are American, you know, um, McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, and so on, other ones. <laughs> so yeah, it does not shock me at all that there's no German word for fast food. Do you eat fast food? Does it have to be a particular occasion, like you're on a road trip or it's two in the morning, or also just on a random Tuesday if you feel like it? Let me know what you think down in the comments. So my question for you is, what other English words do not exist in German? And what do you think of the ones I mentioned here? please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and a really big thank you so very much to our patrons who support us on Patreon and help make these videos possible. Thank you so, so very much for your support. Thank you. If you would like to check out our Patreon page, you can find a link to that down in the description box below. Until next time, auf Wiedersehen.